speak this evening. And then she got an offer to direct an episode of The Twilight Zone. So she called me up and said, Miss Thing, I've got to do this work and you've got to go down and speak in my stead. I'm really honored to be here with you this evening to share this time. What a thrill. What a thrill to listen to. of meeting Dr. King. Although he did break bread at my father's table when I was in college, I wasn't home at the time. I never met him. But I remember what it was like as a little girl seeing him for the first time on television at the home of neighbors, an elderly African-American couple that lived next door. They were so entrenched in the way things were. They had no appreciation for what he had to say. I remember that. I remember their disdain. Can you believe it? It's true. And this, I find, is often the way of great men and great women. Initially, what they have to say is not understood. Initially, the deeper meaning, the deepest meaning, of their words and actions have no meaning for the people on whose behalf they are speaking and working. And yet, the great soul ones continue in their work because they do not work for the sake of being lauded. They do not work for the sake of being acknowledged. They care little for being on the cover of Time magazine. They work in service to humanity because in their hearts there is the living conviction that service to humanity is service to God. I remember so many times seeing him on television. I have to content myself with the remembrance of his words. I have to content myself with being able to reread those words and to contemplate them on an even deeper level and to see a greater universal significance in them. Because readily we understand the things that were said and done in the context of the struggle for social justice and economic equality and shared political power for all citizens in this country. We understand that immediately. But Now, when I rethink 
things that were said, they take on an even greater significance. In speaking of service, I read a quote that Dr. King had said, once entering this path, we must never turn back. I have the feeling that so many of us here tonight are people who live in service. We should exhort others to live in service as well, because one of the things he said was, you too can be great because you too can serve. Our young people are often derided for their choices, their manner of dress, their manner of speech. The only thing that is wrong with our young people is what has not been given to them. Somehow between then and now, we have lapsed into a slumber of comfort. Oh yes, gone are the days when one television set in the home was a great thing. Now they're everywhere, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in the basement, on the ceiling, in the bedroom. We're so comfortable. We're so comfortable. One car in the family? Oh, please. Two, three, four, five. The children have to have cars. We're so comfortable. Do you realize how weak we have become in this slumber of comfort? And this is what we have offered to our young people. The slumber of comfort. This is not right. This is not right that we should come through a time when a generation of people laid their bodies, their souls, their lives on the line. And our young people slumber in the ignorance of comfort because that is what they have been given. This was not the legacy that was left to them. Dr. King also had great reverence and respect for living in accordance with the law. And he made the fiercest assertion in saying that laws that were unjust had to be changed. Well, now let's think about that in the context of what we see happening today. There are a whole lot of changes going on with the laws, but I bet most of us don't even know what those changes are. Sometimes just laws can be changed to become unjust when we sleep in the slumber of comfort. Wake up. Wake up to the truth of this statement. As human beings, 
our lives are inextricably bound together. Wake up to the truth of this statement. As human beings, our lives are inextricably bound together. Not as Native American and African American human beings, our lives are inextricably bound. Not as Caucasian Americans and African Americans, our lives are inextricably bound. As human beings, our lives are inextricably bound together. What affects one affects us all. Wake up from the slumber of comfort and realize what this means in the context of today's world. We speak of building a community. Today, we must build global community. Today, we must live in acceptance of each other as human beings. Today, humanity must do what it has never done in its entire history. Humanity must stand for itself completely. Because what we're facing is not pretty, and it's not nice, and it's very dangerous. Oh yes, it's very dangerous as we continue in our slumber of comfort. We become so vulnerable. You know, the Romans thought themselves invincible. They were the seat of learning. They had the mightiest army. They knew everything. Everything was in Rome. And the Roman Empire was vast. It stretched all over the world and was expanding. Invincible, they thought. Well, the Gauls just sat there and waited for the river to freeze. And when the river froze, they walked right on across and decimated the invincible Roman Empire, sleeping in the slumber of comfort. I really believe it is, as Dr. King said, that only on the day when all humanity sits to feast together at the table of brotherhood can any individual say in truth, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. We are not powerless, pitiful beings. We are together in a house of worship in the presence of the Most High. And if you hold strong to your faith, you know that this presence lives within you fully as you are in this very moment. We are not powerless, pitiful beings. We are not sheep to be led to slaughter. We are created in the image of goodness, in the image of love, in the image of most high. Let us honor the legacy of Dr. King by becoming free at last. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Rashad. Very thought-provoking. You're brilliant, and you're also so beautiful, as we all know. Thank you so much. I know that you'll agree with me that tonight, Georgia Perimeter College has helped to acknowledge Dr. King's call and dream for a nation that embraces and affirms charity, togetherness, dignity, civility, and respect as we acknowledge both our similarities and our differences. Dr. Belcher said it very well earlier. The words from the Negro spiritual, lift every voice, captures the spirit of this event. And I think it's very fitting that we end the program tonight with that thought. I'd ask you to stand, please, and join the combined youth chorus and the symphony in singing the song, the words can be found on page eight in your program. Um. 